Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about RAS, which is a monomeric G protein. Now, whenever we talk about G proteins, the picture that comes to our mind is the G protein couple receptor signaling, where we talked about the trimeric G protein, which have a G alpha, beta, and gamma subunit. But other than this trimeric format of G protein, there are quite a lot of G protein which are monomeric, such as the RAS. RAS is one of the component of MAP kinase signaling pathway and RAS has important implications in terms of physiology. So in this video, we are going to learn all about RAS, its mechanism of action and how it is important in terms of physiology. So let's begin. RAS is a GTP hydrolyzing protein. So it needs GTP for its function. In a GTP bound state, the RAS is on. In a GTP bound state, the RAS is interacting with the switch 1 and switch 2 helix in such a way that it looks like a closed claw of a crab. But when GTP is hydrolyzed and the phosphate, phosphate is gone, in that situation, there is a rapid conformational change and the switch helixes move away from each other. And in this conformation, RAS is inactive. So let's look at at which physiological level RAS works and how it works as a component of the MAP kinase signaling pathway. So MAP kinase signaling pathway is very important. But before that, we need to understand that like RAS, there are many, many proteins which are falling under the category of monomeric G protein, such as Rho, such as RAC, and many more. And they have a diverse family. Now the MAP kinase signaling pathway starts with the receptor tyrosine kinase and the most important part of the receptor tyrosine kinase is the tyrosine kinase domain which is the C-terminal domain. Now upon ligand binding tyrosine kinase domain phosphorylate itself and several SH2 domain containing protein binds to the phosphotyrosine residue. One such SH2 domain containing protein is GRB2, which is the initiator in case of the RAS MAP kinase signaling pathway. Ultimately, another protein called SOS binds to GRB2, which is a guanosine nucleotide exchange factor, GIF. Now, GIF helps in the activation of RAS. Now, RAS, once activated, it activates another protein, which is known as RAF. RAF is a kinase. RAF, in a sequential fashion, activates make, arc, and RSK. And ultimately, it would result in gene transcription. And many of these target genes are actually cell cycle control genes, such as CMIC and cyclin D1. So cl clearly, we can assume that these RAS MAP kinase pathway can ultimately give rise to a growth or cellular division kind of phenotypes. Now, it has been seen that RAS can induce cell division in those cell lines which does not divide, such as fibroblasts. They divide seldom, right? Now, once you have a dominant, a constitutively active version of RAS, which is always active, which cannot hydrolyze the GTP, if you transfect the cell lines with this kind of RAS, then what happens? These cell lines start dividing rapidly, which is unusual for a fibroblast. That means RAS can ultimately lead to cell division by augmenting the MAP kinase pathway, which is a cell division promoting pathway. Now, it is important to understand why this kind of situation is happening. Even if you are not providing growth media direct growth factor directly in the media, whenever RAS is present in a constitutive active fashion, the signaling, the flux through the signaling pathway is flowing and ultimately the RAS is giving rise to gene, gene transcriptions which are ultimately helping in cell division. RAS is found as an oncogene and it is associated with many, many cancer. In fact, if you transfect a cell, normal cell, with a constitutive active RAS transgene, the cell would convert into cancer cell and uncontrolled growth would be formed. That means RAS is an important oncoprotein as well. But the question is how the RAS was discovered and 
how RAS was found to be a component of the MAP kinase signaling pathway and there is an interesting story and the story came from Drosophila. In Drosophila, the eyes are compound eyes. So each units are known as omatidia and there are eight photoreceptor cells arranged in a specific array depicted here. Now, in case of a specific mutant known as sevenless or bride of sevenless mutant, the map the sevenless actually encodes for a map uh, uh, receptor tyrosine kinase, and the development of these R7 photoreceptor cells are actually taking place via map kinase signaling pathway. Now, in these mutant background, where scientist and what happens is like in case of the sevenless mutant, there are no MAP kinase pathway, right? Because the receptor is mutated, how the signaling would flow? So definitely in the sevenless mutant, when, the, when scientists overexpress this constitutive active version of RAS, what happens is very interesting. It rescues the phenotype and all the developmental defect is corrected. That means RAS can allow the signaling to flow despite of the receptor is defective or the ligand is not present. RAS is capable of MAP kinase signaling to flow and this allows the development of the photoreceptor pigment and that is how it was figured out that RAS was actually involved in the MAP kinase pathway. So that is all about RAS. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.